Yo, what up? We're back, and we're going to be breaking down a uh, pretty good fight card this week. I actually like it. A lot of, you know, new fighters coming in that have some potential, some interesting matchups, and uh, we're going to get right into it, you know, with the first fight. It's, uh, or first off, um, actually, just make sure, um, you know, tomorrow is the Dana White Contender Series, so if you're watching that, if you've been placing bets on that, I have been doing pretty good on that. I'm 5-1 and one on the parlay so far this week, or so far this season. And um, uh, I have the video up from for this week's for tomorrow. So if you want to check that out, want to watch that, go give that you know a like, go comment on it, go watch it, and um, yeah, make sure to comment, like, subscribe on the channel. But the first fight of the night here, it's with uh, Pollyanna, Pollyanna Viana, and she's going to be taking on Veronica Macedo. And uh, first off, I just want to say I think the line on this fight is way off, but. You know, for Viana, she's making her UFC debut at flyweight. She had her first three fights at strawweight, and she lost her last two fights, and she was a big favorite in both of those fights, so she really needs a win pretty badly here. And she's stepping in on short notice. She's replacing Rachel Ostevich. And Viana, she's long. She's going to have a three-inch reach advantage. On the feet, she likes to do a lot of circling using her reach. Her hands are not very good, but she has an okay one-two. Um, she'll come forward with straight punch combinations and her best weapon on the feet is definitely her left kick really nice um, Left round kick to the body. She also throw a left knee to the body those front kicks She doesn't really ever go high with her kicks, but the last time uh, She fought a southpaw in JJ Aldridge She really struggled to defend the right hand and she holds her hands low especially her lead hand she's her chin high in the air and she has gotten hit with some big shots her last two fights. She got dropped in her last fight, but she does have heart and a strong chin when she gets hit. She will try to walk opponents down, get it back. And she did, uh, you know, do that against Hannah Cypher. She got dropped in the first round, but she was able to stick in there, make it a close split decision with their forward pressure with uh, some nice counters in there. And uh, she has four knockouts, mostly on the ground, and she has never been finished, so... But Viana is a jiu-jitsu world champion. She's dangerous with submissions, you know, mostly from top position. She isn't the best wrestler, and she looks to have some okay judo throws, trips in the clinch. She landed a decent double leg uh, on J.J. Aldridge and then circled to the back. But she was reversed quickly after that. She was able to get a rear naked choke in her debut, but her jiu-jitsu really hasn't been all that impressive in the UFC. She's lost dominant position. She's shown really nothing off her back. She had both J.J. Aldridge and Hannah Cyphers in her full guard. She really didn't do much in terms of attacking. She will, you know, throw elbows, throw shots from her guard, control posture, but, you know, she doesn't seem to have the best submission attacks, at least against those girls. She will attack armbar. She went for a leg lock for Cyphers, but nothing was really super close. She does have a couple armbar wins on her record, and she has six submissions. She's finished all ten of her wins. And she is 0-3 in decisions, which is a little alarming. And she also has questionable cardio. She definitely slows down in that third round. And Viana needs to go forward, get this fight to the ground, because she's much slower with her feet, with her hands. I feel she's going to get lit up a little bit on the feet in this fight. She has to time the entries of Macedo when she's blitzing in, getting the clinch, take top position. And she has a tendency, um, Macedo does, to give her back. And the rear naked choke will probably be what Viana's looking for to finish the fight. But for Veronica Macedo, she needs a win to keep her job here, plain and simple. She started her UFC career so far 0-3. But she's only 23 years old. She still has time to turn it around. And she's, you know, to be fair to her, she's fought very tough competition. Andrea Lee, Ashley Evans Smith up a weight class where she apparently had a broken elbow in that fight going into it. And most recently, Jillian Robertson. So she's fought three very good fighters, and she's definitely going to be fighting someone more on her level here in this fight. She should be the bigger fighter, or at least more accustomed to fighting 125 pounds. And she's also had the benefit of a full training camp. So it's truly put up her shut-up time for Macedo here, because Viana's coming in on short notice, up a weight class. So she definitely needs to win, prove her, prove her worth. And I actually feel like she has potential. She has calmness, composure in the octagon. And a killer instinct. I wouldn't say composure, actually. She just... You could tell that she's... She is... I'm trying to think of what to say. She's composed when she gets hit. She doesn't, like, um, shy away from getting hit. Composed isn't the right word. She's she's game. You know, she's, she's uh, 
a fighter for sure. But her composure actually needs a little work in terms of the way that she blitzes in at times. But, um, you know, she has a killer instinct. She's calm in a war type thing. And she usually starts fast in fights. She'll win the early ex striking exchanges especially. She's southpaw. She's a karate and taekwondo practitioner. Black belt in taekwondo. So she has a bit of a tricky style. Wide stance. Very fast. Very quick in and out. She doesn't throw jabs or feints much. She really relies on her speed. She'll circle, close the distance with uh, some fast straight punch combinations. Nice uh, straight left right hook. She will trade in the pocket and she definitely has power. She isn't afraid to uh, take one to give one. Good kicks. She'll throw kicks with both legs. Really solid leg kicks. Uh, front kicks to the body. She'll throw head kicks with both legs. She'll throw front leg side kicks. Her round kicks uh, with her rear leg are definitely her most dangerous strike. She has really nasty head kicks, good body kicks, and she'll throw more than one in a row when she uh, lands. She was able to actually win the striking uh, against Andrea Lee in their fight. She just was too fast for her. And she has excellent spinning kicks to the body, to the head. When she's landing and she's angling, staying on the outside, she's definitely at her best. But her problem is she gets too over aggressive. She'll smother punches. She'll let her opponents grab a hold of her, let her get in on, let them get in on her legs. And she's hittable herself, but um, like I said, she has that fighter spirit. She'll return with shots. She has been finished once by TKO versus Ashevid Smith, but that was on the ground. And she does have one head kick knockout win. Her kicks are dangerous, you know, for sure. And she isn't an offensive grappler. She prefers to keep it on the feet and strike. Definitely going to be looking to do that in this fight. But she is a jiu-jitsu black belt. She has lost her first three UFC fights due to being out grappled, though, and it's been kind of exposed as the way to defeat her. She was submitted in her in her first for the first time in her career in her last fight, and she allows fighters to clinch up with her, and uh, you know she'll dart in, and if you could time it, you could just grab a hold of her, and she isn't extremely physical. Um, Andrea Lee, Ashley Evans Smith have just been the more powerful fighters in the matchup. They've been able to kind of just overwhelm her in the clinch. She showed some nice knees to the body. And elbows against uh, Smith. She was able to disengage a few times, few times against Lee early, but overall she lost those spots and she couldn't stop the takedowns. And besides, sometimes creating quick scrambles to stand back up, she was really dominated in the grappling. And Maceda will look for leg locks. She tries to sweep. She does have a heel hook win, and she isn't bad from her guard, but she gives up her back trying to stand up, and she isn't defensively sound on her back. Even in top position, she's very aggressive. She's submission over position, and she'll do things that just aren't very smart. Jump on guillotine, try to jump on the back, end on her, end up on her back, and just doesn't have a great IQ in the grappling exchanges yet. She was able to win some grappling exchanges against Andrew Lee. She showed moments on the ground when she fought Jillian Robertson as well. She was able to sweep Robertson, get back to her feet a couple times, reverse some some, some reverse some takedowns. And, um, you know, sometimes she will attack guillotines, like I said, instead of trying to defend the takedowns. And she has to stop doing that. If she keeps this fight on the feet, she's going to be more successful. She has one submission win, one submission loss. She hasn't won a fight since 2016. Her back is against the wall here. And she's going to be the much faster, better striker. She needs to stick and, stick and move, keep this standing. Viana holds her hands low, uh, very low, you know. And I feel like Macedo can land... Three, four punches, get out continuously. Maybe throw head kicks at the end of her combinations. She could maybe put Viana out or really frustrate her. I could also see uh, Macedo landing a lot of leg kicks and some front leg side kicks to the head. If Macedo keeps this a range striking battle, I think she has a pretty big advantage. And I'm going to pick Veronica Macedo here. I picked uh, Ann Bet against Viana in the last two fights where she was a big favorite against Hannah Cyphers. And against uh, J.J. Aldridge. And I did it again here. I bet on Macedo. I think the movement, the speed of Macedo is going to give uh, Viana big problems. Viana's flat-footed. She becomes gun-shy a little bit after feeling uh, counter sometimes. And I feel like she's going to do that after she feels, this, feels the speed and the counters of Macedo. I think if Macedo doesn't make a, doesn't make a mistake and uh, gets submitted, it's an easy fight for her if she keeps it standing. Um... I don't think that Polly has the power to hurt her. I think that Macedo is just going to land more volume, be much faster, be in and out. And um, I could even see a KO, but I'm going to say Macedo to win this fight via decision here.
And up next here, we have a really excellent fight here. We have Gilbert Burns moving up to 170 pounds. It's actually pretty cool, you know, because Herbert is fighting tomorrow. His brother, he's fighting Saturday, jumping in on short notice here. So, big weekend for them. And uh, Alexei Kuchenko, you know, he's fighting... Uh, He's bringing in his 20 and 0 record in here, which is a crazy record, 20 and 0, and I mean consummate winner, man. And he was set to face uh, Lariano Staropoli here, but Burns is stepping in on, in, slipping in here on short notice, and he's not even close to the same type of guy. So it's a much different matchup, but it's actually, I guess I would say maybe a more similar matchup to his last fight, even though it's. A much higher level striker in my opinion someone that's going to look to strike with them much more and much more dangerous on the feet than okami but both guys are strong both guys are going to try to take it to the ground and um but for kuchenko you know he's a forward pressure fighter he has great distance control very good at sliding in and out of range and nice jab good check left hook good uh good uh left hook right hand combination very quick hand speed and he's very good at, you know, landing, sliding back, and just getting out of the way. He'll land hard uppercuts. He's very good with shot selection. He has really nice body kicks, head kicks. He'll throw kicks with both legs. Very little wind-up on his kicks, spinning kicks. And he's really nasty with his kicks when he lets them go. And, um, you know, he'll throw his kicks in combination. Like, he'll throw a front leg, uh, front leg, like, head kick to a back leg head kick to a spinning kick. I mean, you'll throw a, a lot of crazy variations with his kicks when he opens up, but he can be very methodical in fights and not really do a lot, just kind of coast to victories. And he has very nice front knees as well. His footwork is very good. Good job of stocking approach to the cage, cutting him off, keeping him there. But he is low volume. And like a lot of people are saying, like Thiago Alves beat him, even though I feel like Thiago barely hit him. But with that being said, you know, Kuchiko's never lost... Or even been to a split decision. He's 6-0 in decisions, all unanimous. 13 knockouts. And he's a very good grappler himself. He's obviously going to be trying to keep the fight on the feet here. And use his takedown defense, which looked excellent versus Okami. And Okami's a massive 170 year. He's competed most of his career at 185. And he didn't get close to taking Kuchiko down. Kuchiko was like 13 for 13 or something on takedown defense in that fight. Excellent sprawl. Really good at disengaging from the clinch. Exiting with the knee, with the left hook, with the right hook. He was making Kuchenko, or he was making Okami pay for the takedown attempts with big elbows, knees to the body. And he only has one submission, but he's a very smart fighter, man. He didn't engage whatsoever on the ground with Okami, even when Okami was trying to lure him into the guard. He's going to fight at his pace. He's going to use his game plan. And he systematically breaks guys down, then knocks them out. And in his last fight, he was looking better in the third round than he was in the first round. And his cardio is really good. And he's going to want to use his feints, forward pressure, draw out the bad shots, big actions out of burns. Once he gets his reads, then he should be able to start opening up, countering more. He needs to put the pressure on him, make him work moving backwards. Defend the takedowns and make burns strike. And maybe burns will get tired. You know, he's on short notice, up a weight class. Not accustomed to fighting here at 170, so... Kunchiko's definitely the more technical striker. If he keeps it at his pace, backs up uh, Burns, keeps it at his range, should have big success here. But um, Gibber Burns has you know, been peaking lately. He's won four of his last five, two in a row, over pretty good competition. He dominated a uh, pretty you know, elite prospect in Mike Davis in his last fight. And he, he's putting his hands together. You know, he has one-punch knockout power. Uh, with both hands, you know, he drops a lot of people with overhand rights, dropped OEM with a left hook, and uh, but he is exploitable, you know, he tends to uh, float his lead hand low, he'll back up at straight line sometimes when he's pressured, but the power is the game changer on the feet for him, he has really nice body kicks as well, and he lets it all go, you know, but he does load up on a lot of shots, I feel like Kucheko is going to be able to feign and counter in this fight on the feet, and Gilbert probably has to get it to the ground unless he lands a big knockout shot but you know he has good chin he's durable and he could take shots in return and that's always dangerous you know he has five knockouts he's only been knocked out one time in his career and he's really improved his wrestling you know he was extremely physical for 155 so at 170 it's going to be interesting to see but he shoots a lot of single legs and then you'll chain wrestle you'll go to a double you'll you'll put fighters over his head and bring him for a ride you know he was able to slam OEM a few times um he'll shoot nice reactive double legs 
good job of circling to the back and you'll jump off the back from standing position and you know once he gets on top he's very very nasty man nasty back control he'll transition to the mount with ease arm bars he'll look for rear naked chokes he'll look for arm triangles he has seven submissions he's finished 13 of his 15 wins and he's one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in the sport and burns is going to need to make this fight fast paced more of a brawl he can't let Kuncheko start to walk him down and make reads. If he can make Kuncheko respect his striking, land some big shots, that'll help open up the takedowns. And if he can get on top of Kuncheko, or anyone for that matter, you know, he's going to be a problem. And this is a great fight. Burns is peaking right now. He's very confident. But I think he might have bitten off more than he could chew here versus Kuchenko. I just think on the feet, Kuchenko is a level above. I think he's most likely going to be able to evade the big shots of Burns and counter. I don't see Burns being able to outmuscle him in the clinch or take him down. I think Kuchik will actually time a counter, get the knockout here. I think he has the better cardio. I think he fights the more deliberate, you know, pace that's sustainable over three rounds. And I think that if he could deny the takedown attempts, deny the explosive actions, especially early from a guy like Gilbert Burns, and he's going to be successful. So my pick's going to be Alexi Kuchiko to get the win there. And I'm actually going to say Alexi Kuchiko via late second round KO TKO in this fight. Now next here we have another guy stepping on short notice in Rodrigo Vargas and he's taking on Alex De Silva who has one UFC fight and De Silva was unsuccessful in his UFC debut. He started his career 18-0 and he's lost two of his last four fights so you have to wonder about his confidence but hopefully he still has that confidence he's still here ready to fight and he's still very young he's only 23 years old so he has time you know to build on that really good record. And he's going to need to start the turnaround with the win over uh, Rodrigo Vargas here. Silva, you know, he's expected to face Rafael Fizayev, who's a very good striker. But Vargas is replacing him on short notice. And for De Silva, he's fast. He is really uh, light on his feet. Good movement. Good jab. Nice one, too. Heavy low kicks. Uh, really good left hook, right uppercut combo. Very nice head kicks. He'll um, throw front knees to the body, to the head. Over on the feet, though, he's very wild and he's very dangerous, but he leaves openings. You know, he has multiple one-shot finishes, big power, but he's hittable. And he's been stunned in fights, but overall, he has a great chin so far in his career. He's never been finished, and he has 13 knockouts, so he's definitely extremely dangerous. And he's very good with his grappling as well. He'll throw brutal elbows in the clinch. He can cut fighters open with elbows. He has good knees to the body, to the head. His weakness is his wrestling for sure. He allows fighters to back him up. And once fighters get in on his legs, he's fairly easy to take down. But he's very active off his back. He'll create scrambles. He'll reverse to top position. When he gets top control, he's really good at getting the back, locking in those rear naked chokes. He does a decent job of wrestling himself offensively. We could push fighters to the cage. He'll shoot double legs. But overall, he isn't the greatest wrestler. He tends to shoot from way too far out. And when he gets hit, he'll start to leave himself to susceptible to being uh, put on his back or caught in a choke because he'll just start diving in on takedowns. And he's very hard to hold down, though. He's a great scrambler. I think De Silva is, you know, very good. He's super dangerous. He's finished all 20 of his wins, seven submissions. And he was submitted for the first time in his career in his last fight. He was guillotined after a pretty good showing versus, uh, you know, a much bigger fighter on short notice. And for De Silva, you know, he should look to back Vargas up, beat him up with kicks, punches, in and out movement. I think Vargas is going to be going for takedowns, but even if he takes down De Silva, I think De Silva should be able to sweep or submit to top or submit in top position. And um, you know, Rodrigo Vargas, he's jumping in there on short notice. He's coming off a head kick knockout of Mike De La Torre in just 18 seconds, but he hasn't fought in a year and three months, so he's coming in here off quite a long layoff. And he's pulled out of two fights this year, so I'm not sure why. But he starts quickly. He's good in the first round. He comes right uh, right forward. He's a Mexican warrior. Hands are not very good, though. He has a short reach. He struggles to find his range with his punches at times. But he will try to use head movement to get inside, land hooks, overhands. And he will occasionally uh, crash the distance with straight punches, overhands, and try to get a little bit crazy. He does have some very good kicks, you know, good rear leg head kicks. He'll throw um, kicks to the body and the head. Sometimes he'll even throw jumping head kicks as well. But overall, to me, his striking is not good. He is durable, though. And, um, you know, he's there to throw down. But he's very heavy on his lead leg. 
He could struggle to get any meaningful offense going because of his reach. And he's very emotional when he gets hit. He'll wane in, get very wild, very hittable. But like I said, he has a good chin. And he actually has very good power both in his hands and his kicks. And he has six knockouts. And he's never been finished by strikes. So, so far in his career, he has been very durable. And he looks to mix it up with his grappling. But he has average wrestling at best, I would say. He'll back fighters up against the cage. Take him down. He'll attack with singles, doubles. I have seen him land some trip takedowns as well. On top, he is aggressive with ground and pound, but he's not technical. And you can tell he's green in the jiu-jitsu realm. His defensive wrestling also is not very good. He can get taken down with uh, well-timed shots. He doesn't have good chain wrestling against the cage. And he doesn't offer much off his back. He can be held down. That's how he lost his last fight. Vargas tends to get tired when he's forced to wrestle as well. His movements on the feet after they stand up become much more labored. And coming in on short notice here, I expect him to maybe try to go for broke in the first round, get the knockout. But I think his aggressiveness is going to play into Silva's hands a little bit. And uh, I don't think Vargas is UFC level or would be in the UFC if this fight wasn't on short notice in Central America. He's a tough dude. He's fun to watch, but... You know, he's not UFC level in my opinion, and he has three submissions. He's finished nine of his ten wins, and he has been submitted one time. But the level of competition he's faced is not very high. And in this fight, he should look to use his punches to get takedowns and just try to brawl with Silva. But um, I think De Silva is going to finish Vargas pretty easily here. He's better everywhere. I expect him to get a submission in this fight, probably in the first round or the second round. He's just on another level in my opinion with striking, with grappling. And I think he's going to show it here, get a big win. And I'm going with Alex De Silva here. I'm next year, man, this is a pretty sick fight. This 135 pound division, man, or one, yeah, 135 pound division, man, is fucking stacked, bro. Like, man, I mean, these are two other guys that are probably not even in the top 30 that are just beasts. But um, Gutierrez, he's coming off a pretty excellent performance. He dominated Ryan McDonald. He showed some very good striking skills. And, um,. He's a good striker. He has very good defensive movement. He likes to fight on the counter. Nice round oblique kicks. Really good uh, just round kicks to the legs as well. So he'll throw a nice check left hooks. Good one twos. Good at throwing the left hook moving backwards. And he'll throw nice uh, front kicks to the body. He also is very good with his blitzes. He'll blitz forward with straight punches. Uh, nice front leg round kicks to the head. Really nice spinning back fist spinning kicks. And Gutierrez is very fast. He's always fainting. He keeps fighters off balance. He's very hard to read on the feet. But at times he can um, show when he's going to spin. He could be a little bit deliberate in his movements where people could get reads on him. And he can get back to the cage. He allows opponents to control the center at times. He does have six knockouts, good durability. He's never been finished by strikes. But I do feel like... In his last fight, man, I mean, he hit that dude McDonald with the kitchen sink. He couldn't finish him, so maybe he doesn't have that huge power. But he's an average grappler, man. He has questionable defensive wrestling. He doesn't really wrestle offensively, and he's solid in the clinch, though. He will land hard knees. He could be taken down, but he has solid get-ups. He has been out-grappled by guys like, you know, Tamar Valiev, Jared Saunders, but he also has a victory over Tamar Valiev. He was also finished on the ground against uh, Hione Barcelos in his debut. But he has decent butterfly hooks. Or um, he'll even give his back to scrum back up to his feet. He does have, um, you know, okay arm bars, triangles from his guard. He'll throw up quick arm bars and he uses those submissions more to scramble back up. But he'll also roll for leg locks. And he, also, he has one career submission via rear naked choke. And he's been submitted one time. But the game plan for Gutierrez here should be to stick and move, not allow himself to be backed up to the fence, and just try to kick, blitz, keep DeFritis off balance, and just avoid the takedowns, win the scrambles, and keep it on the feet here. But um, for DeFritis, he had a dominant win in his debut. He won a comprehensive decision against Felipe Calaris, and that was at 145 pounds, so he's going to be down to weight class here. And DeFritis has won seven consecutive fights. He's a well-rounded fighter. He's a long reach. He uses it effectively. Really nasty jab. He'll throw it very quickly. He'll double, triple up on it. Uh, very fast straight right hand. He'll throw a nice one-two. He throws really nice left hook straight right combos. He'll pour on the pressure when he gets his range as well. He'll uh, mix it in head kicks at the end of his combinations. Very fluid kicks. 
He likes to move a lot. He'll stay on the outside. And he kind of keeps his chin high in the pocket. And he can't get clipped a little bit in exchanges. But he seems to know that. Try to avoid those types of situations. Keep it on the outside. And he'll use uh, well-timed double legs as well to avoid exchanges. But he doesn't sit down and try to knock opponents out. He's more about speed and movement, touching guys. He has four knockouts though. And he's never been finished. And he is a strong grappler. I was really impressed with his grappling in his debut. He has a very nice clinch game. He'll throw really nice knees to the body, elbows to the head. Good Muay Thai plum. Showed nice double legs and body lock takedowns against the cage. Strong top game. Good at landing, you know, a few punches, ducking under for well time doubles. And he's very he was very good at mixing up, you know, his grappling to striking in that fight where he would throw a couple punches, get Felipe's hands up, get him or get um yeah, Kalaris' hands up, get him looking for the takedown, then take him down. And he was able to advance the mount, take the back, land some nice elbows, and that was against a black belt. He did lose position a few times, he ended up on bottom, but he showed up a strong game off his back as well. Great guard recovery. He attempted an arm bar, triangles, good butterfly hooks, solid sweeps. He will also attack the legs, and he has good get-ups. And when he does stand up, he'll, he'll attack right away, stay on opponents, not give him a chance to recover. And um, great cardio, man. He keeps a high volume. He can grind in the clinch against the fence. You know, I was very impressed with the way he blended his striking, his wrestling against Kolaris. And he has... Five submissions in his career, mostly off of his back. Three arm bars, a triangle, and then he has one rear naked choke. But I expect Afritas to want to use his wrestling a lot in this fight. He needs to keep the pace high, get takedowns, grind against the fence. Just try to break Gutierrez. He has to go forward in this fight. He can't play an outside game against Gutierrez too much. I think he was going to have some success there. But he more needs to use his reach, his hand speed to back Gutierrez up. Uh, try to keep his back near the cage, clinch up with him. And this is a great fight because both guys are excellent. But I think the hands, the wrestling, and the free just is going to be the difference here. I think he's going to land long punches due to Gutierrez having his hands low. Catch a jam some of the kids. Start to get the cage control time. And I think he's going to be able to get some takedowns as the fight goes on. And just be the fighter that wants it more and just takes the fight if it's close at the end. So my pick's going to be Geraldo de Freitas here. But I think it's a very close competitive fight. Man, and up next you have another pretty awesome fight. I'm telling you guys, this could be a sleeper card for real. But, you know, we have Halion Pava here. He's Pava here. He's, he's has a 12-fight winning streak that he brought into the UFC. But it was snapped in his debut. And he may have have raised his stock even with the loss you know he entered a heavy underdog against Kai Car Fritz short notice and he lost a split decision and that wasn't Australia you know it may have gone the other way if it wasn't in Australia but Piva should be improving quickly you know he's moved up team alpha male he's only 23 years old and he's a technical brawler he's uh someone who likes to control the center walk opponents down but he has a long reach and he keeps the volume high he'll keep him at the end of his long punches Good jab, nice leg kicks, good one-two. And his straight right hand is money, man. He's very accurate with it. Throws it as a lead fairly often. Nice jab, overhand right. And he has a, you know, powerful counter right hooks as well. He'll throw a right hook, left hook combination to close the distance. And he likes to throw down, man. He's willing to each us to give his own. He'll get emotional at times when opponents hit him and you'll want to fire back immediately. But he has nice round kicks to the body, to the head. Good chin. He's willing to trade in the pocket. Three knockouts. He's never been finished by strikes. And Paiva, he's a strong grappler also. Strong in the clinch. Good job using punches to get in, get into the clinch safely. And from there, he'll look for standing guillotines. He'll try to jump on the back. And he's just very aggressive. And his wrestling isn't the best, but he's a very good scrambler. Very good at creating 50-50 50, 50 positions and then ending up on top. Very good at defending takedowns with switches. But he can be taken down against the cage. Off his back, he has very good sweeps, though. He'll attack with triangles, arm bars. And his sweeping game is dynamic, man. He'll turn bad positions into good ones. And it will be ex extremely interesting to see if Bontran will be able to control Paiva on the mat. He doesn't really look for many takedowns himself, Paiva. But he will occasionally go for clinch takedowns. He does a good job catching kicks. But on top, he does have nice elbows. He'll look for a lot of front chokes, darces, anacondas, guillotines. He does have three submissions. And he has lost once via submission. But he has very good cardio. He'll push a really high pace. But he's much more of a position over submission threat. He'll control on top. 
And, um, you know, in this fight, Paiva needs to use smart pressure, cut the cage off, try to make it small in there for Rogerio, and then use his long punches, front kicks to the body, keep the pressure high, and just try to break him down. When Bontrain goes for takedowns, he has to defend, win the scrambles, return to his feet, and then keep the pressure high and try to uh, make Bontrain tired. But for Rogerio Bontrain, he had an excellent UFC debut as well. He won a decision against a very tough guy at Magomed Bibilatov. And this fight was also a split decision that could have gone either way. But Bontrin was a lucky one that got the win here. And Bontrin is very impressive. He has a record of 15-1. He's more of the you know short compact type of fighter. And um, he's a counter striker. Nice jab, good left hook. Pretty fast. He'll leap into a one-twos. He'll leap into a you know very nice lead left hooks. Good low kicks. And he has nice uh, counters with his right hand. He'll counter with uh, right hooks, right overhands over the top. He'll also attack the body with uh, straight and hook punches. He'll throw heavy shots to the body. And uh, he's going to have to get inside because on the outside, he doesn't have the striking to contend really against most guys. He doesn't really have a lot of kicks. He doesn't have the best range striking. But he has a good chin. And... Uh, you know, he's able to use it to get inside, and that's where he's more effective when he can get a hold of guys, really. He's definitely more of a grappler. But, um, you know, he was rocked very hard on the Dana White Contender Series, and he didn't show great defensive technique to me when he was hurt. He wasn't really using footwork. Instead, he was just plodding forward, reaching for the clinch. And uh, he got away with it there, and it actually was very impressive because he took him down and got the finish shortly thereafter with the rear naked choke. So, you know, he definitely has heart. He's definitely willing to uh, power out of, you know, tough positions, come back. But he only has two TKOs in his career. He's never been finished by strikes, so he has a good chin. But he's explosive, good grappling skills. That's really what he wants to do in this fight, in most of his fights. He's a black belt, very strong. You know, there's videos of him, uh, you know, lifting like 450 pounds, uh, on Instagram, and he will use flurry of punches. He'll get in the clinch, dig underhooks, nice trip takedowns, and if he can get a tight waist, he'll uh, land big slams. He's very physical, and in this matchup, he's definitely going to be the stronger fighter. And he catches kicks very well. He'll take opponents down a lot that way. He will also shoot some singles, doubles in space occasionally, but mostly he gets the cage. He'll get his takedowns. His clinch takedowns are definitely the best ones in his arsenal. When he takes opponents down, he has great control, very good back takes. And he was able to take the back of Magomed Bibilatov, who's a accomplished grappler, multiple times. He will he will also move to mount, attack with the arm bars, attack with the arm triangles. He has very good takedown defense. He's very hard to hold down if you do take him down. And um, he was submitted by Michinori Tanaka in his one loss. But he has 11 submission wins. And he's going to want to counter pipe on the feet. And then use that to wrestle. If he can get takedowns here, take the back. He's going to have a shot to finish Paiva. But I feel like Bontrain is a stronger, more physical fighter here. If he can ground him, start putting his weight on him, he's going to have success here. This is a close fight, but I'm going to go with uh, Rogerio Bontrain. I see him being able to uh, land some hard counters, get some respect, earn takedowns. And I think when he's in top position, he's going to be able to possibly take the back and control or finish there. If he can't control on top and Paiva is able to sweep or scramble back up continuously, the fight could sway towards Paiva, but my pick's going to be Rogerio Bontrain to win this fight via decision here. And up next year, we have a pretty itchy fight because Tisha Torres, you know, she has her back against the wall here. She's, um, I believe she's lost three consecutive fights. It could be, I'm about to look that up. I, I believe it's three consecutive fights that she's lost here, and she definitely needs to win because... You know, I don't think they would cut her with four consecutive losses, but that's just a terrible look. And it is three consecutive losses, but it has been to the champion, Jessica Draws, the former champion, Joadia Jacek, and uh, Wheelie Zhang, who's the title challenger coming up. So this situation kind of reminds me a little bit of Damian Maya when he lost to uh, Kamaro, Colby, and Tyrod Woodley. And then people were saying, you know, Oh, he's going to lose to Lyba Good. He's going to lose to Rocco Bart. Did he beat both those guys? So I kind of feel like Tisha's in a similar spot. And we'll see if Tisha can do the same thing and uh, do what Damian Maia did and take care of Marina and move on to the next contender here. But um, 
from what I've seen on Tisha on social media, you know, she's extremely motivated. She feels like she, this is a make or break fight for her career here, which it is. Looks in excellent shape, looks ready to go. She looks like she really wants this win. But she's going to have a pretty tough test here in Rodriguez, who, you know, she won her last fight. She got kind of a an easy fight there in Jessica Aguilar, but it ended up being a tougher matchup. You know, Aguilar landed some shots. She got some takedowns. And she made um, Marina work for the win there. But Marina also has a draw against Randa Marcos. And, um, you know, she's a former kickboxing world champion. She's much more of a kicker, though, than a puncher. She really tends to really look for a jab, right hook, jab, straight right hand, jab, overhand. You know, um, she doesn't really look for much besides that. And she leaves her chin high at times when she's punching. She can get countered clean. I feel like she's pretty slow. I think Torres is going to be much faster than her. She throws very nice low kicks, though, Marina. She'll throw really nice front kicks to the body, to the head. She really tore up Jessica Aguilar with that front kick. Really nice round kicks as well. She'll throw, um, you know, those Superman, Superwoman punches, spinning back fists. And, um, you know, she's very good at battering the lead leg and then just going to town with a lot of different types of strikes. But when fighters blitz her, she tends to exit in straight lines. Random Marcos is able to land some clean straight punches back her to the cage. And overall, I'm really not Im impressed, extremely impressed with her range striking. She does have great cardio. She will continue to go forward. And she puts a lot of pressure on fighters and breaks them. She was able to, you know, do that to Jessica Aguilar where she cut her up really bad. But um, she has five knockouts. She's never been finished by strikes. And But Rodriguez is at her best in the clinch. She does a great job getting head positioning. She'll land nasty knees, excellent knees to the body, to the head, short elbows to the head, big power in her clinch strikes, and that's where she gets the majority of her finishes. She isn't a bad grappler, actually. She'll go for takedowns against the cage herself. She has pretty good takedown defense. She was also able to sweep Randa Marcos a couple times. She defended the takedowns at Aguilar. Um, she was taken down a few times by Marcos, though, and she was mounted in the first round. I feel like Torres has better grappling than Randa Marcos, definitely better wrestling. And, um, you know, she did show good composure when she was mounted. She couldn't get up, but she was able to uh, survive the round. But she took a lot of ground and pound. But when she took top position herself, she landed some solid shots. She will posture up and, uh, you know, hard knees to the body there as well. And elbows to the head. She just has one career submission, though. She's never been submitted. And she has tremendous cardio. Her pace is one of her best assets. And she's going to want to go forward and just try to, uh, you know, get in the clinch, in my opinion. Because she's going to be the much taller girl. Use those front kicks to back Tisha up. Straight punches. Get in the clinch. Try to beat her up in that Muay Thai plum. And uh, just put it to Tisha. But, um, you know, Tisha, in my opinion, at range is going to be the better striker. I think she's going to be able to land the counters with the hand. She's going to be much faster in and out. And I feel like Tisha can move on the outside and make uh, Marina come to her. And as long as Marina doesn't get her range with that front kick, doesn't start to jab up Tisha, she starts coming in and Tisha could keep, you know, um, her rhythm varied on the way that she enters and exits. I think she's going to have a lot of success on the feet with her speed. And I feel like when Marina starts to get a little bit aggravated and uh, irritated that Tisha's just touching her and moving, that Tisha can then, you, you know, duck under, start to use her wrestling control on top. And I feel like Tisha just really needs this fight, man. She needs to win. I think that Tisha, if she loses this fight, she probably, I don't know, man. That'll be a really bad loss. It'll be a telling loss because she's only 29 years old, man. She's not an old fighter to say at all. And I just feel like she definitely has enough to beat a girl like Marina. She's going to throw the more volume as well, I believe, because she's just going to be in range more. And, um, you know, I just feel like the speed and the takedown ability is going to be there for Tisha. But if Marina can get in the clinch, she could change the game. She could change the fight because she's going to have a 5-inch reach advantage. If she can get that plum, it might be hard for Tisha to disengage. She can go to work with some big knees. But, um... My pick here is going to be Tisha to be able to execute a game plan, get a much-needed win here, and get back on track. So I'm going with Tisha Torres to get the decision victory here. And up next here we have a bit of a weird fight. It's like a trap fight here with, you know, Ghana. He looks like a really good fighter who's three, only 3-0, three and o, taking on a guy who's much more experienced at 9-0. and o, And uh, a little bit, doesn't look too overwhelming on the on uh, 
tape. But, you know, Gane looks like he has potential, man. His striking is pretty good. He's 12-0 in Muay Thai as well. And he's not your typical heavyweight. He has really good movement, switch stances, very fast, fluid. He does hold his hands low. But, um, you know, he does. he's very light on his feet. He bounces in and out very well. He's hard to hit. He's 6'5 with an 83-inch reach. And he uses it very well. Really nice jab. He'll snap the head back. Snap the heads back of his opponent. And he'll come come very fast with the jab. He'll follow with really nice straights to the head, to the body. He'll rip the jab. Um, you know, he'll... Or I mean, he'll throw the jab, then switch stances, rip the body with straight punches. And he can switch stances pretty fluidly. He also slips punches pretty well. Uh, he'll create new angles. You know, slip a punch, switch stances, and land a shot. He's barely gotten hit in the fights that I've seen, you know... And he's just been lighting these guys up. He has a really nice left hook, right uppercut. Hard leg and oblique kicks. And you also throw occasional body and head kicks. But he's mostly a puncher. He does have a really nice front knee to the body. And when he gets opponents moving backwards, he'll start, you know, mixing in spinning back fists, spinning kicks. So far in his career, man, he's been a demolisher. He's been the, you know, the hammer. And he's been able to land, back his opponents up, make a miss, counter and take him out. Three knockouts. In his three wins, and I haven't seen him tagged or, you know, uh, hit with much, very many big shots. And I feel like, you know, it's a little bit, I don't know, it's hard to say. With I think that he's very good, but we have to see him how that striking style works against a guy who's actually a, you know, a very good striker. Because it looked like he got a little bit tired in his one of his fights that I saw where he went into the second round, but he was able to finish him in the second round still. But I've not seen very much grappling from Gane. In his last fight, when he dropped his opponent, he was very aggressive with ground and pound. He did get off balance with the leg attack, but he scrambled, attacked the front choke, retook top position, finished the fight. I haven't seen him uh, shoot takedowns or defend them really, though. And I imagine he's going to be hard to shoot in on with the movement, though. But um, he has all right cardio. He could keep it his movement going. But like I said, he looked like he slowed down a little bit. He does throw a lot of volume. But it looks like he could be special potentially. But he's only 3-0. and He has dominated guys who are 7-1, and 8-1 and in his last two fights. And um, these guys, you know, uh, Ghana and Pessoa were actually set to face each other on 2KO 46 in March. But the event was canceled and it's pretty cool for them because now they get to run it back in the UFC. And uh, Ghana's going to be the faster guy for sure. I see him trying to back Paso up near the fence, use his speed, make him miss, make him pay, attack the body. He needs to respect the power of Paso, but try to overwhelm him with his athleticism. But for a Paso, you know, he's an undefeated prospect as well. He's 9-0. and He's fighting out of Brazil. Um, he's fighting out of Evoluca Muay Thai, which is a very good gym, you know. Thiago Santos, I believe, fights out or not. He fights out of Tata fight team, but I know... Uh, Quite a few guys fight out, fight out of Evoluca Muay Thai. And he has good louder movement. Really nice leg kicks. And he's been very good at, um, you know, attacking the legs early and often to slow the movement of his opponents. And he probably should try to do that here in this fight. He also throws some, you know, body kicks and spinning kicks. But he isn't a great, nearly the athlete of Ghana. He's not a bad athlete. But when opponents pressure forward, he doesn't really have quick feet. And he'll just trade wildly. You know, he has huge power. And he's been able to knock out a lot of opponents in these sloppy pocket exchanges. But I haven't seen a lot of footage on him. And that's pretty much what I see from him. You know, he gets hit in the exchanges as well. But he has a good chin. He'll fire back. Much more basic. And he just likes to trade inside sloppily. And get knocked out or get himself or knock his opponent out. And he's also soft in the body. I don't know if he's going to be able to take body shots from Ghani. But um, he does have six knockouts in his nine wins. And I haven't seen any grappling from him at all. He doesn't really look like someone who have an explosive wrestling shot. I highly doubt he's going to take down Gone unless, you know, he has some sort of wrestling I haven't seen. But he does have one career submission. And he's going to try to land leg kicks, in my opinion, slow the movement, force him to brawl. He doesn't really have a path to victory other than that that I can see. And I think Ghani's going to get a knockout in the first round here. And um, we're going to see how he progresses. And we're going to see if, you know, he could potentially be a good fighter or he's going to get exposed. But I'm going to go with the Frenchman here to get the win in his first UFC fight. 
And up next year, we have Enrique Barzello taking on Bobby Moffitt. It's going to be two uh, grapplers thrown down here. And this is a pretty interesting fight. Um, you know, if you guys have been watching for a while now, you know I really like Enrique Barzello. I'm a fan of his style. I'm a fan of his fighting. And he's an ATT. He did stumble in his last fight against Kevin Aguilar. But I feel like he showed a lot of heart in that fight. He was hit with some bombs. And it looked like he was the one in the third round that was starting to put it to Aguilar a little bit. Give it to him a little bit. And um, he has a great gas tank. Really good chain wrestling. And Moffat has good wrestling as well. But the thing in this fight, I believe that's the difference is Barzola's gas tank. I believe that Barzola has better cardio and Moffitt for um you know what I have to say about him is I feel like he has the better submissions and he has more of a submission chance in the first round. He's a great scrambler. Barzola has to respect his grappling, especially early. He can't let him take his back. He can't be sloppy. And Moffitt's gonna be looking for that submission, I believe, in the first round he's gonna have a chance to get it. But you know, I feel like if this fight gets extended, I feel like Barzola is going to start winning these grappling exchanges. On the feet, I feel like Barzola is a little bit faster. He throws a little bit more variety, more leg kicks. He'll, um, I think he has more power as well in his punches. And I think he's just a little bit better striker than Bobby Moffitt. And for this fight, I just feel like, um, you know, it's in South America where um, Enrique is going to have the all the crowd. I don't think that Moffitt's going to be able to catch him in a submission early on. I think that Barzola's going to come in here really motivated, ready to go off that loss. I think that he's going to push the pace. I think that he's going to be able to win some scrambles himself, win some striking exchanges. I think he's going to throw a lot of leg kicks. And um, I think that in the second, the third round, you're going to see him start to get top position, start to grind out Moffitt a little bit, and just break Moffitt's will maybe, and uh, win the decision. So my pick's going to be Enrique Barzola. To get a hard-earned decision victory here, and um, you know, get back on track. So I'm going with Enrique Barzola here. And up next here we have the debut of a uh, guy who's a uh, legend on the jiu-jitsu scene, and Rodolfo Vieira taking on Oscar Pichota. And um, you know, Rodolfo Vieira, man, he's a legend in jiu-jitsu. Like I said, he's a five-time ADCC world champion, and he's five and zero in MMA now. He kind of reminds me, you know, more of the Rafael. Um, Lovato type, you know, I feel like he's more of the athletic jiu-jitsu guy, the guy, the jiu-jitsu guy that's, you know, maybe he doesn't have the striking of Lovato, especially now, and Lovato definitely has better striking than him for sure, but, you know, they're both explosive and athletic, you know, he's more athletic, explosive than like a Damian Maya, let's say, but on the ground, you know, they're just as deadly, and, um, you know, he's 5-0 and with five finishes since moving to MMA. Training out of Fusion XL, so he's training with guys like Jacare, Mike Perry, who's on this card. And um, he doesn't really offer much on the feet. He'll throw leg kicks, jabs, one-twos, decent hooks in close range. But mostly he'll throw a couple shots, get respect, throw some feints, and then just shoot in, go for takedowns. He is hittable. He was caught with a decent uppercut at knee against uh, a guy named Jacob tag on the regional scene that rocked him a little bit but right after he was able to get in get on a takedown get it to the ground he's rough it rough or rugged athletic and um you know he isn't a guy that's gonna quit you know he isn't gonna quit when he gets hit in my opinion it's hard to say for sure because i haven't seen him face too much adversity but i think he's a tough guy and um he's instantly gonna become one of the best jiu-jitsu fighters in the ufc he's one of the best passers in jiu-jitsu history you know, they call him the passing machine. He, um, you know, his passing ability to move to the back is just, it's like butter, man. It's just beautiful. And he's, he's was fighting in um, jiu-jitsu at 220 pounds in the 220-pound division. And he was able to handle the strength of those bigger guys, manhandle them. And uh, not manhandle them, but just able to contend and beat a lot of those guys up there. He's one, he was probably the best heavyweight jiu-jitsu artist in the game. And, um... You know, he does cut a lot of weight. They said he's cutting like 27 pounds to, to uh, fight this week. So, you know, he's going to be very big going in there. Very physically strong. You know, and um, he has solid wrestling skills. Very nice judo throws, trips. He sets singles and doubles up pretty well. Very physical when he gets on, on the legs. And in top position, you know, he's a presser jiu-jitsu guy. He'll turk the legs, move directly into mount or take the back. Um, you know, his, his, he's exceptional at taking the back. And MMA, man, he's going to be able to get the back of opponents with ease. Um, 
you know, his passing ability is just on another level. If he gets on top of anyone, they're going to be in extreme danger. He actually can generate big power with his ground and pound too. And he uses that to create passing situations, soften opponents up. And does he does have one ground and pound finish. He has three rear naked chokes. He has an arm bar or an arm triangle. And he's finished all five of his pro wins. His game plan is no secret, man. He's a specialist. He's going to be trying to get this fight to the mat. And if he does, most likely he's going to finish the fight. And he's only been out of the first round one time. And he's coming off a huge win. He defeated an undefeated 10-0 prospect in uh, Vitaly uh, Nemchino. And, um, you know, he beat him in fir be a first-round submission just two months ago. So he's riding that high. And uh, for Oscar Pijota here, he's going to be uh, looking to bounce back from his first career loss. He got submitted by Gerald Mearshart. He had some early success, but then he tired out and it led to him getting finished. Uh, he's going to be the much better striker here. He has knockout power, and he's more dangerous standing up than Vieira. I expect him to try to use the use ladder movement, snipe Vieira coming in, try to use long attacks. And he's going to be the longer fighter here. He's also a southpaw. I expect Oscar to use his right hook a lot in this fight. He has a nice straight left hand, and uh, usually he'll throw it to the head, but he also throw it to the body. And he landed some nice uh, uh, right hooks to the body to a straight left hand combination against Jonathan Wilson. He actually dropped him with that combination. He has a nice right uppercut. And when he backs one to the cage, he'll uh, unload with punches. He knocked Tim Williams out with the overhand left. And he has nice rear leg head kicks. Um, good inside leg kicks. Um, perhaps, you know, he's not the greatest athlete. He's a little bit stiff. He's also hittable. And fighters can cut him off. He showed a ton of heart, though, in his last fight against Gerald Mearshart. Man, he was taking some bombs. He was trying to return with the zone, standing right in the pocket. And uh, I expect Vieira to be the faster fighter here, though. But he does. Piotr does have five knockouts. He's never been finished by strikes. And he's a credential jiu-jitsu artist himself. He's a black belt of Robert Drysdale. He's an ADCC uh, European world or European champion, I believe. But he isn't nearly on the same level as Vieira. And Piotr, he's a decent wrestler, but he's going to be looking to use it in reverse, keep it standing here. In his last fight with Jared Mearshart, he actually dropped Mearshart, but he was eventually out grappled and submitted. And Mearshart was able to, to body lock him fairly easily when he got in on his, when he got in on the clinch. And uh, when he took him down, he did damage. And Piotr looked gassed out very quickly. Mearshart seemed much stronger in the clinch, and I expect Rodolfo to attack with a lot of body lock judo type takedowns. Piotr does have no quit in him at all. He went out cold trying to uh, fight the rear naked choke. I don't think his defense is up to par though if he's taken down. I definitely see him getting finished. He has to keep it on the feet. He has to keep it standing. Um, he does have five submissions. And he has questionable cardio. He needs to address that. But in this fight he's going to want to try to use lateral movement, straight punches, uppercuts. Maybe look for a knee or a head kick. I think Vieira should get it done here, though. I expect him to be able to get inside, make people to work a bit, eventually get him down, and, uh, you know, pass like he always does, get the back, and I'm thinking he's going to get a first round near naked choke here. So my pick's going to be Rodolfo Vieira to be a winner in his UFC debut here. Now, next year, we have a fight that was rebooked from, uh, you know, a few months ago. And to me, this is an interesting close fight. Latifi is going to be trying to get this fight to the mat, and uh, I think it's kind of a hard matchup for Latifi. Volkan likes to pressure forward very heavily. He's always looking for his left hook, his straight right hand, and he has heavy leg kicks. He also close the distance with big hook combinations, and you obviously don't want to trade with Volkan. He has that freakish power in his hands. He'll use a double jab to create openings for hooks for uppercuts, and he's going to need to be more composed in this fight. Use his leg kicks, his jabs, his combinations, but be in and out, control range, not give a leer opportunities to get on his legs or clinch up with them. I see Alir shooting a lot of singles and doubles. If, even if he doesn't get them, he's very good at exiting with left hands. I believe that he's going to be able to get in on the legs of Vulcan, and even if he can't take him down, I think he's going to try to land off the break like that and make Vulcan work, make him more hesitant to pressure. Alir has dangerous overhands, hooks, leg kicks as well, and Vulcan tends to get hit with a lot of overhands. I think if Latifi can get top position, he's going to have an advantage there. Both fighters gas though, but to me, it's going to come down to if Alir can get rest from the takedowns or if Volk could get stuff and keep moving backwards, then I think he's going to knock him out. I just feel like um, Alir's not going to be able to take him down or hold him down. 
I was more impressed with Dominic with uh, Volkan's fight against Dominic Reyes. And I'm going to say Volkan gets a first or second round knockout here. I think he's just going to be the bigger, more physical guy. And I think he's going to be able to stuff, keep it on the feet, and, uh, you know, hurt, catch um, a leer with something and finish him. So I'm going with Volkan Ozdemir to get a first or second round knockout here. <laughs> Man, I mean, this fight... I don't know, hard to say with this fight, but uh, we got Luis uh, Garagori. He's, he's going to make it his UFC debut in his home country. He's 12-0, and 0, and um, he's been fighting some very questionable competition. His last two wins have came against guys who are 0-0. Zero and zero. He's a Muay Thai guy who transitioned to MMA. He looks to be a dynamic striker from the footage I've seen, and I haven't seen a lot, but he moves while he'll switch stances, nice leg kicks, uh, long punch combinations, nice jab, good one too. Very nice rear uppercut left hook combination. Nice left hook right straight. And he looks fast with his hand speed. He'll explode uh, into punches. He uses a lot of feints. Excellent kicks. And his leg kicks are nasty. Really nice round kicks. He'll throw spinning kicks. And he looks very fast. But he also looks like he can brawl sometimes and not be very defensively sound. But um, Garagoli, you know... And, you know, he does have four knockouts on his record, so he has sub power. He's never been finished. He's obviously, he's never lost. And he looks actually not be a terrible grappler from what I've seen. You know, he, he isn't offensive with takedowns, but he has good takedown defense. He'll reverse the top position, good ground and pound. He has really good elbows, and his guard isn't bad. When he's taken down, you know, he will throw up decent triangles, guillotines. He'll jump guillotine as well, which I hope he doesn't do in the UFC. He'll also belly down when he's taking down and come up into single legs to take top position, but his grappling overall doesn't look extremely good, and he looks pretty low level, at least for an MMA fighter. Um, you know, he does have five submission victories, and, uh, you know, I would say he's all right overall, and Herberto, you know, he has a job on the line here. He had to put up or shut up for him here. You know, he's lost, I believe, two fights in a row, three fights in a row. But he's still young. He's still 24 years old. And, um, you know, striking isn't bad. Um, good kicks. And he's been in some wars. A uh, really nice head kick knockout against Martin Bravo. But when you watch his last fight, man, when he fought um, uh, Austin Arnett, he was getting dominated on the feet. He got very tired after he won some striking in the first round. And just, just his cardio, his takedown defense is very questionable. And, um, you know, he does have decent takedowns of his own on his double legs. Decent ground and pound. He's active with submissions. <laughs> but, uh, to me, man, I feel like, uh, Luis is going to win this fight. I'm going to go with, uh, Luis via decision here. I just think he's going to be able to get the win. I think that, uh, it's going to be a, I don't know, man. I'm really struggling to pick this fight. I couldn't find a lot of footage on, uh, Garagori, and I'm just not that impressed with Bandane. So, uh, I have more faith in picking Garagori in his home country to get the win here. So, I'm going to go with Garagori to get the win via decision in this fight. Man, and up next here we have a pretty sick fight with Vicente Luque taking on Mike Perry. And, uh, you know there's going to be a knockout in this fight, man. I mean, chances of this fight going decision is slim to none. And, uh... To me, though, man, I mean, there's one fighter that's clearly superior than the other one, and that's Vicente Luque. I feel like Luque is much cleaner with his combinations. His straight right hand is just nasty, sick power, and, uh, you know, he's very good with his disc control with keeping range, really nasty leg kicks. He'll throw head kicks, body kicks. He's good on the ground as well, really nice submissions, and, uh, I feel like as long as he doesn't brawl with Perry, he doesn't give him the opportunity to land some big shots on him. Like, when he fought uh, Derek Krantz right away in the first round, he got hit with a big bomb, then got taken down. And when he fought um, uh, Brian Barberina, he got dropped. He got hit with some bombs in that fight. It seemed like he was just in a war in that fight unnecessarily, which you do not need to do that here against Mike Perry. Against Mike Perry, he has to control the distance. Use that straight right hand. Use his jab. His jab is nasty as well. Use those leg kicks. And keep the you know keep the pace high. Back parry up. But don't load up. You know, just touch, touch, touch. 
and maybe even go for takedowns because I feel like if he can get top position, he'll probably submit this guy. You know, even when he gets dropped, he showed a very impressive ability to, um, you know, be able to just go right into submissions. Like when he got dropped against, um, uh, what's his face, Brian Barberini, he jumped right on the dude's back and almost choked him out against Derek Kranz. He was able to eventually get the submission. And, um, or I think he got the knockout against Derek Kranz. I can't remember, but I know he, uh, he got deep on a submission against Krantz as well in their fight. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, he actually was a TKO. He actually has f five consecutive finishes. And he's fought a guy that I believe is similar, but maybe in a little better, more dangerous because he's longer. And I believe he's more explosive and more athletic in Nico Price. And for Mike Perry, though, man, I mean, this guy's dangerous. And uh, if you let him get in close range with you, that sort of set they look at a lot of trouble with Barbarino, where Barbarino was having success hand fighting, throwing those elbows over the top. But Mike Perry doesn't throw those short little touch shots and doesn't throw the volume. He's always winding up trying to throw bombs. Even in his fight with, uh, you know, Cowboy Oliveira, I feel like Cowboy Oliveira, if he was composed, he would have won that fight running away because when they were at range and Oliveira was throwing those long, explosive punches that Luke has, he was tinging up. Mike Perry he was binking him right on the chin. Perry was wobbling. Perry was uh, falling backwards. But Oliveira loves getting that clinch. She gets very wild. He was crashed the distance. And Perry was able to start leaning on him, clinching him up, landing those elbows. He has really good short range power. And he started to kind of wear on Oliveira and start beating him up. And he made it more of his fight. And I feel like Perry, you know, in this fight, I actually think Perry's going to try to. Uh, grapple up Vicente a little bit potentially not maybe take him down but push him against the cage attack with that dirty boxing with those elbows over the top uppercuts in close range because that range man he's gonna have a five inch reach disadvantage a speed disadvantage I think he's gonna get his legs chopped up a bit as well and I feel like just the ability to control distance to be in and out to land those long straight punches of Luke are gonna be it's gonna make it very hard for Perry to get inside with those when he, you know, leads and winds up on all the shots. So, um, man, I mean, I'm heavily leaning towards Vicente Luque. I think he's definitely going to win this fight. Unless he just brawls or does something stupid, I feel like he's going to be able to win. I feel like uh, Perry's aggressiveness is going to come right into his style because he's going to be able to land those low kicks, those straight punches. And as long as he doesn't get tired as well, because if he gets tired, Perry's a really durable guy, man. I mean, he can take a lot of shots. And he only needs one opening to knock you out. So if Luke empties the tank on him, beats him up for two rounds, and then the third round he's gassed, Perry comes out. You know, there's that chance that Perry could get the finish here. But Luke to me, technically superior everywhere, standing up, on the ground. Maybe in the clinch, Perry's a little bit better. But Luke doesn't have to let him allow him to be there. And even in the clinch, you know, that's debatable as well. And, um, yeah, so I feel like... Vicente Luque should get the finish here. He should get a submission victory or a knockout. I think that he's going to have success on the feet. But I feel like he should also maybe look for takedowns. Even though I really don't feel like that's what he's going to do. I feel like he's going to want to come in here and, you know, keep it on the feet for the fans. So I think that he's going to be able to get a... I'll say he's going to get a late second round submission with a front choke. But I think it's going to be due to him dropping Perry. Making Perry shoot in for a bad takedown and just grabbing up that neck. So I'm going to pick Vicente Luque to continue the streak of uh, fucking um, uh, finishes. And they better give him a fucking ranked opponent after this, man. But yeah, so I'm going to Vicente Luque, the silent assassin, to get the finish here. And I'm next here. You know, I'm going to say it right away. I'm going with Liz Carmi. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. I mean, fuck, man. You got to go with Valentina here. Um, I know they fought 10 years ago. Liz got the win. But, you know, apparently with that fight, it was... Valentina was winning the fight. She was even winning the grappling, apparently. She was taking down Carmouche. And uh, Carmouche landed a nice up kick that cut Valentina open and ended the fight. So it's a legit win. You know, she caused the uh, injury to end the fight. But a little bit of a, you know, it wasn't a skill win there. And now Valentina's just leveled up even more, man. In this fight, I just don't see a lot of openings for Carmouche, man. I mean, Carmouche is explosive. And she's very strong. So, I mean, if she can maybe leap in there, land a big shot at the takedown. But with Karmush, man, to me, she doesn't like getting hit. And she seems to, uh, when she gets hit, she'll kind of tense up. She freezes. 
And you don't want to be doing that against Valentina, man. We saw what she did to Jessica I in her last fight. Um, I actually feel like Valentina is a better grappler here as well. I feel like she has better takedowns, better jiu-jitsu. Um, we just saw what Antonina did in her last fight with her jiu-jitsu. And, man, I mean, just, I just don't see a lot of ways that that Liz could win this fight. I think Valentina is going to be able to keep it on the feet, take it down if she wants to take it down, and just style on this girl like she did on Jessica I. And, um, you know, we have seen Liz dropped with head kicks before when she fought um, Caitlin Chukagian. And I feel like uh, Valentina throws head kicks a lot harder than Caitlin Chukagian. So we could see another head kick knockout here, but I think we're definitely going to see a finish over these five rounds. I don't think that um, Liz is going to do the last five rounds here with Valentina. I know in early in her career, earlier in her career, when... Um, you know, she was at 135. A lot of people were complaining she's boring. She's she can't finish fights. But um, shit, she's came to uh, 125. She's finished two of her three fights. She just brutally finished Jessica I. And the one person she didn't finish was Joe Eddie and Jacek, who's just almost virtually impossible to finish. So uh, you know, Rose finished her, but that's it. And um, yeah, man. So I just feel like Valentina's on another level here. Um, I'm going to say that she finishes Liz in the second round via TKO in this fight. And, um, yeah, I mean, she's minus 1,100 for a reason. I would never bet that or play that line. It's kind of crazy. Um, if you want to bet her, I would just bet the it's. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what the inside distance prop is, to be honest with you. But that line's a little bit, it's not crazy, but it's just unplayable in my opinion. And, um, but I think this is a sleeper card. I think it's a good card. But, um... You know, for the most confident pick of the week, I'm going to say that it, I'm going to give you guys um, Hadolfo Vieira for that. And for the parlay of the week, I'm going to do Alex Da Silva and Vicente Luque as the parlay of the week. So that's going to be the place for this week that we're going to be doing. Like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure to check out that Dana White Contender Series video if you haven't checked it out yet. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a comment, you know, and... Uh, do the same on this video. Let's try to get 100 likes again. We did that last time. So thanks a lot for the support. You guys are the shit. And uh, yeah, man, comment down here. Tell me what you guys like. Tell me what you guys uh, think about this card. And, um, you know, hopefully we can catch these bets and make some money this weekend. So we're going to make some money tomorrow and make some money Saturday. So let's get it, baby.